Welcome to UTV Driver. Today we are talking about the Honda Talon Ooh, the and Honda not Talon. just any Talon, the 1000 R4. We've had one of these in the shop for about a month now. Yep. Put some miles on one and we've got some thoughts. Many thoughts. The Talon uh, was sort of a game changer when it came out. Dual clutch transmission, uh, motor borrowed from the Africa Twin. All of these things were good things. Fox live valve was the first time we saw a live valve. Great rig. Machine. It was a great rig. That was then. The market has moved forward and uh, the old Talon's starting to show her age a little bit. Yeah, and the thing is they came out this year with the Talon 1000 R4 and they told us it was a new rig. Yeah. It's updated. Got the updated steering, which is nice. Gearing's nice. a little different. Gearing's Clutching's a little, a little different. Little, yeah, all of those things are nice. But there are still some things missing that we've been asking for. Yep. So today we are going to go over the top five ways to fix the Honda Talon. Number one, fix the throttle. We've been complaining about this <laughs> for the last three years. It is... <laughs> It's bad. Yeah, yeah, it's just, it's too sensitive. You know, it's too sensitive Way for too sensitive. a side-by-side. -side. Perfect for out railing in the dunes. Uh, turns out there are a lot of other places to ride in the United States that aren't the dunes. Right, and you know, some of it is because they use a geared transmission as opposed to a CVT transmission. Now there are other companies out there, Can-Am, that are producing a dual clutch transmission that don't have this problem. Smooth as butter. Smooth as butter. So I think part of it really is the throttle napping. And other manufacturers get around this with a pretty simple fix. Just a throttle mode control. Right. Yamaha makes the uh, D-mode. Yep. Uh, Polaris offers one on the XP1000, and it basically lets you pick your own party. Do you right. want it to be super spicy? I put the throttle down, it puts out 130% of whatever I'm asking for and go. Yep. Or do you want it turned down to where my throttle equals 50% of throttle opening? Right, and this is like a really simple piece of electronics that would fix so many of our complaints with the talent. The technology is there, and it seems Seems like a company like Honda could pretty easily throw that button in there and just cure all those ales. Yeah, and you know, when I was out on the Pioneer ride uh, last year, I was speaking with an engineer there, and they said that they, they are aware that it's a thing that they need to address, and I think they are working on some sort of throttle controller. It's, it's, it's time. Number two, shift logic. It's not great. It's super abrupt. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the, the glory of the dual clutch transmission, you've got your flappy paddle. Yep. So if you're railing and you click off a gear, you get that sort of snap back. Yep. That's awesome. The problem is it also does that in auto mode, even when you're right. just putting around the yard. You brought up Can-Am earlier. They just released a dual clutch transmission and they've solved that, right? You oh can rail and shift it manually. And when the rig knows you want to shift manually, it knows you probably are going to be driving a little bit sportier. It knows that you want those hard shifts. But if you put it in auto, it's, the computer automatically thinks, wow, this guy's just hanging out. And so it backs off that aggression. It's related to the throttle mapping, but Honda could do that pretty easily, or we hope they do when they reconsider the throttle mapping. Yeah, and it, it's tough, right? Because it's hard to tell, is that a, is that a clutching thing? Is it a right. programming thing? Right. Is it because this, this drive unit got ported over from another application? But Honda is, is no stranger to making a driveline work very, very well. Right. Uh, so it makes me wonder what exactly is going on there. Yeah, I mean, just a little bit of clutch slip would really yeah. solve that problem yeah. right off. Yeah, exactly. And it's, you know, it's an oil bath, uh, clutch system you're not really going to see a whole lot of wear no. uh, even if you do soften things up a little bit it's honestly of, of all the things on this list that's my biggest aggravation and it's not just a ride quality thing it's a grip thing yeah right? yeah, so, yeah. You know, it shocks the tires exactly right so so where we ride there there are a lot of situations where you've got to really control the amount of grip you've got whether it's climbing a steep step or making your way through a rock garden and when you get that big jolt, you'll slide off of your obstacle, yep. uh, you'll get a little bit more tire spin than you usually would, and that's just not what we're after. Right, and it adds to NVH too, let's not forget that. I mean, you're driving along in auto mode in a Talon, and before it shifts, you hear a bang. Yeah, and it's just kind of, it's a little jarring. Sometimes, yeah. you know, the first time it happens, you're gonna wonder what's wrong with your machine. Dial all that out. The, the people who want that, give them a button to allow them to have it, but otherwise, just Back it off a hair. Yeah. And uh, speaking of wheel and tire slip, uh, the number <laughs> the number three thing we've got to change about the Talon is the wheel and tire package. It's really not great at this point to pay all the best part of $30,000 for a rig and you get 27 inch front and 28 inch rear, big and littles. 
Uh, the front tires have that classic kind of golf cart thing where there's no shoulder to them. They're just rounded off like a dirt bike tire. And they and just... It's, it's also tough because they, they ship with 15-inch wheels. So the right. tires, they, they just... They look rubber bandy. They look yep. small, and the thing is, the Talon can accommodate much larger tires. Right. We had 32s on a Talon with without any trouble, no trouble, and it looks excellent. And weirdly, it smooths out the drivetrain. Yep, yep. The weight of the bigger tires really calms that down. It it it's almost as good as putting a throttle. It's not as good as putting a throttle mode on it, but it's the same thing. The rig's going to look a little bit more purposeful, and some of that driveline shock we talked about with the transmission would be taken up by the bigger tires. It's going to be a more capable rig out of the box. And the other thing is, it's not unprecedented. It's not as if we're asking Honda to do something with the Talon that other manufacturers don't do with theirs. Can-Am will sell you a Maverick X3 with 32s on it. Uh, the Yamaha R-Max, which is a little bit closer to a Honda Talon competitor, comes with 30s. And that's all I'm asking for. I'm not right. asking for 35s on a Talon. No. I just want 30s, right? Yeah. 35s and maybe a 14-inch 14 14 wheel, something a little bit smaller. You know, we, we've run into pinch flat problems with yep. the, this wheel and tire combo in the past. And again, I can't stress it enough, get rid of the staggered size. Yep. I, want, I want square all the way around so that I can rotate these things, especially in a situation where you're primarily running in two wheel drive. Yeah. You'll just roast through those rears. Well, and, and not to mention spares, right? If you, yeah. are, if you want to run one spare tire with you, then you really need square sizes front to back. Because if you pop a front tire and all you've got is your wide section rear tire as a spare, you're, you're hosed. Yeah. You still have to find a way off the trail that's not your machine. So yep. make them square, make them bigger. And of everything that we're talking about here, this is probably the easiest thing to fix. Right. right. It's, you know, it's not a big lift. You know, Honda, Honda, like all the Japanese manufacturers, tend to be pretty conservative when it comes to vehicle changes because, you know, they, they want the reliability. They want to make sure yep. that the thing is going to stand up. But I can tell you we have driven the absolute snot out of a Talon with 32-inch tires on it, and it's fine. Right, and it's easy, it's cheap. Infrastructure exists within Honda to do this. They have third-party suppliers who can do this for them at the drop of a hat. So, yeah, I mean, I think that might be... Yeah. Next to shift logic, that has to be the top thing on the list. All right, before we get to the next thing, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel. We've got content like this every week. You're going to see more of it as we go forward. And then go over to social media. Hit us up on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. We're there seven days a week. You don't want to miss any of that. All right, I, I maybe misspoke earlier when I was talking about the easiest thing. Uh, that might go for number five, which is get rid of the window nets. Yeah, just take them out. Yeah, I, you know, look, I understand why the window nets are there. They they are designed to keep your hands inside of the, the vehicle in the, in the event of a rollover. Um, no other manufacturer does that uh, primarily because it is a hassle. You know, right. anytime you're getting in and out of the rig, uh, you're getting caught on them hinders the ability to look around, right? You just go to, go to look out the side and your helmet hits the net. Most people are probably just going to take them out anyway. Just just get rid of them. Yeah, just pull yeah. them. And it, this is an endemic to Honda thing, right? The Pioneer has them too. Um, all of their utility rigs, and some of them have full net doors and they are universally more pain than they're worth. Throw them away. Yeah, and, and you know, it's it's tough, right? Because if you forget to clip them in while you're driving down the road with the thing on the trailer, it beats the snot out of the rig and frays the nets. And, you know, we're, we're all for safer rigs, um, especially because, you know, I think one of the biggest injuries uh, comes from getting your hand out of a rig in the yeah. event of a rollover. Um, but I think that has more to do with driver training and rider training yep. than it does anything else. You I mean, know, we, or you get limit straps on your seat belts to yeah, do that. And, you and know, if, if you if you are out railing around in the desert, you can put window nets on, or you can put limit straps on. You know, and so the window nets, the aftermarket window nets, work better yeah. because they clip in. They're easy to clip out. Yeah. They're going to be safer. I mean, the little mesh net guys that Honda puts in there. I mean, they're safer than not having window nets, but really. Like, if you're in trouble bad enough to need a window net, you need something a little bit more substantial than these, I yeah. think. So get rid of them. Uh, number six, let's talk about the interior a little bit. Okay. We should couch this, because when the Honda Talon came out, it was kind of in the same camp as some of the offerings from Yamaha. You would get into a Talon, and the interior was much nicer than the fare, especially that you were getting from... Polaris we'll just say, and Yeah, Polaris and Can-Am. Yeah. They, were, they were not great, and the Honda was a marked step up. That has changed. For 2023 and 4, that is completely out the window. So Polaris and Can-Am have leapfrogged Honda and Yamaha, and now the Honda just looks dated, and it looks cheap, and the well, fit and, and finish isn't there. And like you were saying, that's Honda's fault. 
Right. Right? Because when the talent dropped, we were like, this is how you should be doing it. Yep. And Polaris and Can-Am paid attention and didn't just meet that threshold, they exceeded it. Yep. And now it's to the point where equivalent money will get you a much nicer interior. Right. Yeah. And Honda has the reputation. I mean, if you think back to the early 90s, uh, going back again to motorcycles, the motorcycles that Honda built in the in the early 90s were jewels. You yeah. know, they were almost mm -hmm. German levels of quality and just individual parts, even down to the screws, it was fit and finish was paramount to everything. We want to see that in their side-by-sides. Don't sell yourselves short by building an interior to a price point when the world knows you're big red because you know you're getting high quality when you buy Honda. Let's see that in the interior. Okay, let's talk bonus round. Yes. Uh, we had this idea, uh, Associator Jackson Cooper brought it up not too long ago, and I thought it was absolutely brilliant. It's a fantastic idea, and that is... Take the engine out of the Goldwing, put it in a Talon. <laughs> the Talon, like, genetically needs this to happen because it is based, its powertrain is based on a motorcycle to begin with. Let's just give that a little bit more. You can even make it a sport rig, right? Yeah. You can sell the normal mm -hmm. parallel twin Honda mm -hmm. Talon. Give us that flat six. Put it in the like fire breathing Pro R, Maverick R fighter, whatever. Yeah, you can call it right. the Talon Type R. Yeah, Talon Type R. There it is. <laughs> we take commission. A big flat six, right? Right. Same dual clutch transmission. All the horsepower in the world. What kind a of lot horsepower? of torque? Uh, it's not. It's not crazy. It's still sub two hundred. Um, but you got a lot more torque, and it sounds like a flat six, which yeah. sounds great. I don't know if you've ever heard a Goldwing with straight pipe. Yes. It, they, <laughs> it sounds so good. One of the best sounds in motorcycling. It, yeah. it really, I'm not being facetious. Yeah. Yes. So a flat six, straight piped. Oh, you know, I'm throw, here for that. Throw a turbo on it. Yeah. While we're at it, yeah. you know, throw a turbo I mean, on you it. Know, can and Polaris have, uh, or Polaris specifically, has broken down the door in terms of displacement. So right. just, just lean in, Honda. Just go, go nuts. Yeah, go one point eight liter flat six in a, you know. I want that. I do. I yeah, that bad. I'm into it. This has been our list of how we would fix the Honda Talon. We want to know from you all what you think would change the Talon for the better. Put it down below in the comments and then head over to UTVDriver.com. We're there five days a week with news, reviews, buyer's guides, everything that happened that week in the world of UTVing. We'll see you there. Time is at 10, not even 11. <laughs>